The Toshiba MW20F51 is an all-in-one television set produced in 2005. The TV features a 20-inch FST black picture tube. This high contrast flat CRT provides a bright, sharp viewing experience. The digital comb filter minimizes dot crawl, eliminates noise, and improves picture quality. The front firing speakers provide excellent stereo sound for audio entertainment. The TV is equipped with a built-in VCR, DVD player, and multi-format card reader. This was Toshiba's Swiss Army knife of televisions. Let's take a closer look at the Toshiba MW20F51. There it is. Well, what we have here is a 20 inch Toshiba flat screen television. Check it out. This is the model number MW20F51. 51. This is manufactured uh, maybe actually by Toshiba. I don't know. We'll have to open it up and see. It's a TV, DVD, VCR combination set. And it is NTSC. It's from August of 2005. This is our input board where we have VHF, UHF, digital audio out. And then we have composite video out, left, right audio out. Composite video in, left, right, audio in, and that's it. Line in two. So a second input here for composite video, headphones, input. Here's our VHS slash VCR. We have controls for that right here. Channel controls. And then open and close. Looks like for the DVD player here. DVD player controls, volume controls, power. And heck, we even have a memory card. Thing, and it can take all these goofy formats of memory cards if you want to stick some files on a memory card and have it play on the TV here. Well, 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 looks like we have some composite video fed in here. It doesn't look that bad. I mean, it actually looks pretty good. Now, thankfully, you can change the channel here. And that will change the inputs, so you don't have to worry about really having a remote. It's not 100% required. If we look inside the set, we see an Orion tube. So again, this early and mid-2000 Toshiba sets are full of Orion stuff. Uh, let's start up here. We have our anode cap. And then we're going to move around here, stereo speaker over there, our deflection yoke, and then we've got our neck board, and we will, or I will remove this and service it. There's at least one capacitor right there. Definitely could use some fresh solder and a cleanup, so that's what I'll do to it. Now if we look down here, we can at least be happy that... Our deflection board is isolated over on this side so it's held in with some Phillips head screws and then wiring uh, harnesses and connections so once we get that disconnected I'll probably pull this board and this neck board at the same time and service those two now the power supply over here is attached to the VCR so I'm gonna see how easy that all comes out after I have out these two boards to give some more space Occasionally, I need to come on here and give you a good stern warning about some of these CRTs. This one particularly managed to have a super huge charge on uh, the discharge. I'm about to show you that here, but please note that you don't need to be messing around with these CRT tubes 
if you don't know what you're doing. I could feel it. Ooh, I know that was a big one. Wow. Yeah. And I bet you it'll pop again in a couple minutes. All right, the CRT is now free of all the boards down there. I definitely need to get in here and get to cleaning. There is what appears to be some more cigarette residue or something. Now here's the bundle of boards that I removed. And I'm not actually going to do anything besides clean uh, this stuff. I'm not getting into these electronics as far as this DVD player or this VHS player. Honestly, I only agreed to work on the things that did not involve these two systems that on this one is going to be just the deflection board and the neck board. So that's over in the service bay. The rest of this is simply going to get cleaned and then pretty much left alone. Well, in here are the boards that are going to get serviced. And, yep, there's definitely some gunk as far as dirt and cigarette grime on this board. Now, this is a Samsung lead-free flyback. Oh, wonderful. Oh, man. So, I think we've seen this. Um, goodness gracious. This is not... This is not the preferred CRT to have, okay? Lead-free solder is not very good. Look at this board. We're probably already going to see some spots that look dodgy. Look at that inductor right there, L402. Cru everything's crusting. I mean, this is all going to get serviced and completely refloat on solder, but just look at that solder. It's not that good. Ugh. Lead-free solder. Hit those capacitors down there. It's just not, not good, folks. It's not good. These boards are serviced and reinstalled with the others. Here's the neck board and the deflection board down there. Our anode cap is good and everything in here has been cleaned. And I've inspected things. Everything looks fine. So that's the level of restoration I'm going to do is just those two deflection in the neck board which is the higher voltage areas now there is the power supply but I don't see any issues with this and these caps are actually Rubicons so they are very nice and they all appear to be in good shape so that's one good thing with this TV is good capacitors were actually used and then there's the new capacitors in there so this just needs to get reinstalled and then we'll run some tests and see how this set looks and works and uh, see if there's any other cool things we can find out about it. Got my composite video input connected. Where's that? Down here. Okay, let's get this over to the side a little bit. Super Famicom right there. And well, let's just hope nothing happens. This is the first time I've powered this on since restoring it. So I hear a little energy getting in there in the tube. Let's see. Please, please, please. Okay. That sounds normal. I'm going to send in that video source, and there we have it. Okay, so that's interesting. That looks really dark, doesn't it? Just want to make sure that nothing is smoking. Everything's fine. It definitely looks darker. Let's see if perhaps the G2 got turned down accidentally while I was restoring it. Yeah, that appears to be it. So that's something that can happen when you work on these boards is the screen voltage just got too low. And then sometimes you have to change the focus because maybe you bumped it. Or maybe I bumped it and spun that potentiometer while I was working on it. But it looks to be good. I'm going to let it run for a while. And then we'll come back and look at it one more time. All right, we're going to take some time and talk about this TV set a little bit further. And as I do that, again, I'm going to put some footage of this TV in action as I discuss um, a little bit more. I learned about it as well as 
my grade on how I basically consider this one stacking up to the competition and other CRTs from this era. Let's talk about things that are good about it. It's really cool that this set has all this stuff in one compact unit. The DVD player is really great. It actually will play DVD-Rs and CD-Rs and CD-RWs and all types of disc-based media. And then you can even take and loop out that uh, through the output of the back. On the input boards, you can output the signal and send that into something else so you can uh, use this for a plethora of reasons that way but the DVD player is very nice it's very easy to use when you put the disc in and hit go on the player it switches automatically over to the DVD mode and so you again you can use it without the remote the VCR is similarly great it works really well it puts out a great picture and the sound quality is nice and again you can output this signal from the output on the back of the television and that also will help if you're doing something like making copies of tapes or copies of some kind of old media or if you are backing up this media and you have a way to put it onto a capture card you could do all that from the back of this TV set so that's a really cool feature that I didn't anticipate originally that it was going to have was this ability to use this TV as kind of an awesome backup machine. So that's a really high positive. It also has a really great digital comb filter. Now it is limited to composite video for input, but the comb filter is great and gives an awesome image. So if you're limited to composite video and you only are using composite video consoles with it, it makes a good team up for that. And so the image is nice but then we start getting into the bad parts of the tv which of course is the inputs it's just really limited on what you can input into this tv you have composite video inputs and rf slash you know vhf slash uhf that's really all you can put in uh, from an external source you do have a couple of composite video ends but you only have that composite video input and as of today there is no like documented modification uh, available uh, right now for adding new inputs to this TV set so you're locked in at composite video. Now the probably worst thing about this television is ultimately that it has lead free solder in the components and hardware. So first off you saw where I took it apart there's lead free solder in the flyback and then the um, solder on the boards is also lead free. You can see that marked. We could also tell. So that's a big downside on this television because that solder will probably not last as long as the capacitors in this set. This thing is full of really nice Rubicon capacitors and I feel like most of the time those capacitors are going to last longer than the solder will. I mean another 5-10 years the solder could just be broken apart so bad that uh, we could have a lot of cold solder joints and these TVs will just start to fail at that point. So I think that's about everything. That's the good, that's the bad. Now, this is not a great gaming TV. I mean, it's okay. So uh, the things that, again, that it has is good for it is the sound, the stereo sound, and the um, nice comb filter helps the composite video look better. Uh, aside from that, it's pretty much bare bones and not that great for a um, retro gaming CRT, but it is usable. Now, the uh, again, the thing that it's going to be really great for and it's going to get a better grade on is a video playback and some kind of video copying machine or uh, video archiving machine. I think it's going to get great grades for that, so I kind of have to give it two grades as far as like a video game machine oh it's not gonna be good you know what do you think like a factoring in the quality I've got to give like a D plus for a video game machine it's not the greatest um, but it's gonna get a high marks for a video backup machine I of course still take off marks for the solder but it's definitely a B plus machine if you're looking for something to just watch movies and um, if you're looking to copy something, it's going to be along that B plus, almost A minus on that. But uh, it's really just not the best for gaming television. I think you could find better options still right now. 
in uh, 2024. But hey, what do you think? Do you have this TV? Um, I know that the remote control would make it a lot better and it would probably maybe have more features that I could use and play around with if I had the original OEM remote. Uh, I did look further at the manual and I would think that from the things it says in there, you would have better features with that remote control. So if you have this TV and you really love it, let us know in the comments below and uh, I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.